This final part deals with the object loop section. Notice the button labelled from loop or range. This can be used to find the tempo of an imported loop. As you can hear, the click and loop are completely off. To find the tempo, I'm going to do this. Select the loop, then go to the menu item, Range, Edit Range, Range over all selected objects. I've assigned my own hotkey for this. I suggest you do this as well as there is no default hotkey for this command and it's very useful. So now the range is sized to the exact length of the object. Next, click on the button From Loop or Range. Type in the number of beats. It's 8 in this case as it's a 2 bar loop. The tempo has now been detected as 125 BPM. To make this the project tempo, left click over BPM on the transport and select 125 from the list. If the tempo isn't in the list, double click and type it in. You can also change the BPM in the project options. After changing the tempo, the project tempo change window will automatically appear. In this case, I'm leaving both of the boxes unchecked. So now the tempo of the project matches the tempo of the loop. To make this a repeating loop, tick the Loop On checkbox. Now grab the bottom right handle of the object and pull it to the right. The loop will now repeat for as many times as you want. You may decide you want to use a smaller segment of the loop. To do this, click on the left arrow next to Loop End. This resizes the loop based on the current nudge step setting of one beat. You may also want to experiment with the loop start and loop length arrows as well. If you want to reverse the playback of audio objects, tick the reverse playback checkbox. So that concludes this final part of the guided tour of the object editor series. I hope you found it useful and thank you for watching.